Good morning, good morning, good morning. Happy Saturday. Who am I? I am Tamara Brown. I am an author, blogger, website designer, as well as a publishing consultant and the host of Blah Diaries, Broke, Lonely, Angry, and Horny. Let me say that again. Broke, Lonely, Angry, and Horny. Shattering the myth. Getting out of your mess. Changing your mess. And turning it into a masterpiece. And so guys, thank you so much for listening today. So let me talk a little bit about when we are dealing with Mr. Wrong. And we want him to be Mr. Right. Am I ineligible for Mr. Right? So guys, I have been tackling some things this week. And so you all know that I'm going to talk about some things that challenge me. As a woman, as a mom, as a person, as a human being, and be very transparent about it because we all have, may learn from one another. We can learn from one another. So let me tell you a little bit about what my dilemma is. So if anybody who knows me knows, I always talk about Lloyd, right? Um, and so there's no secret to the love and how it is an up and down relationship, um, He is incarcerated, so let me just clear the air. And so the reason I wanted to talk about it is because sometimes we become ashamed of the people that we love because they're not perfect. They're not the lawyer or the doctor or the Mr. Right that people and your family members may want for you. Your family may want for you to be with so-and-so and so, but this person who's Mr. Wrong in your family eyes, and maybe even in your eyes. And I'm going to say why I said in your eyes, because there's a couple of things. Um, We want perfection. Well, at least I do, right? I want a perfect person for me. My favorite story of all times is Cinderella. I read that book a thousand times when I was six years old. And and one of the reasons is, is because it was the king the prince or the king saving this girl who is in poverty, kind of like my story, (laughs) right? You know, she was with the stepmothers and the evil, you know, sisters who were so mean to her. And it was kind of like my story of wanting to be rescued from poverty, wanting to be rescued from everything. And you think that that Mr. The Mr. Wrong. So, from a little girl, I was fascinated with bad boys, right? Always have been. Um, they had to be tough. Um, I didn't, I, I wound up being with someone for a long time who really wasn't a bad boy, but it was my ultimate dream. Like, thugs were, and as my mother would say, I was crazy about guys who had a tough hysteria. Because I'm not that tough, I can be, but I'm not. So, Guys like that fascinated me. Um, and because of maybe the, the leadership that was represented in my community, I grew up in the hood. I grew up, grew up in Brooklyn, New York on Gates Avenue. You know, so at the time and era, the, 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 the big boys were the drug dealers. My uncle was tough. You know, he wasn't a drug dealer, but, you know, he, he had a big voice and was very intelligent and and got out of a lot of things. So I was around people who represented being strong black men. And I hate that title, but it is the truth. So when I went outside, who did I see? I saw guys that were dealing drugs with the nice cars. And I wasn't fascinated about the money and their cars. To me, at the time, most of (laughs) I always had the contact of conversating with intelligent drug dealers. So when I say intelligent, their conversation was not like most guys. Meaning they knew about business, but they just was executing it in a wrong way. And, And it scared me because, you know, my mother would say, I don't want you around those people. My Aunt Cookie and my Uncle Kyla did not play that. Um, but he knew that that was the, the, the type of men that he said, you like guys that are tough because you're not tough. And it's true. 
So anyway, Mr. Eligible, ineligible, you know, I've been celibate for 11 years and I've been pretty much alone. And one of the things that I realized is that I want someone who is going to represent me in a way that sometimes I can't because I'm not that, that I'm not a, a strong, when I say I'm strong in other areas, but I'm not that girl who, I want protection. I guess that's the word. And I used to think that I was ineligible for that type of love, for that type of protection, because when you're looking at me, you know, I just didn't think I qualified. And I think a lot of women go through that uh, because I, I I had a lot of issues. Like I used to think, well, you had to be because, uh, again, the way I was I was raised, you know, it was told to me that if you were light skinned, that if you aren't light skinned, you're not beautiful. If you're dark skinned or you and I'm not as dark as people think, but I'm a brown skinned girl that that wasn't beautiful. Period. So I had to get over that barrier because I was told that light was right. And if you're not light or white and you didn't have pretty eyes and you didn't have all of the attributes that these other girls have, that men are never going to love you the way they love that light skinned girl. So I had to get over that barrier. Then I had to deal with the barrier of feeling like I wasn't pretty enough. So... I always thought that when it came to meeting a guy of high caliber who wore a business suit and had a great job, that I was ineligible. That my friends that were light-skinned, they were going to get a husband. They were going to get Mr. Right because they already got the qualifications. I realized now and, and years ago, that's not true. It's not a fact. But that was my issue. And then I met Lloyd um, and, and if you notice, I don't talk about my past relationship because I, it really is irrelevant for me and not because the person is irrelevant, but it was just so much that went on and so much I needed to learn from that. And I learned a different lesson with Lloyd. I learned, um, who I was and I, and I'm gonna, you know, kind of, I, I learned a lot because he was, Everything, he was a thug, but I didn't know what I was getting into. Um, because I really thought that he was going to be the guy that um, would just shatter me in some sense because I wasn't prepared. Um, and when we started, when he came home, the first, when he came home from being incarcerated, he literally was thinking family. He was thinking this is structure because he was very structured because of the environment that he was in. And he came home with an, with an agenda of, I want to build a family. And I used to think it was a joke because, you know, guys don't want a family nowadays. But he really wanted a family. And eating at the, one of the things that was really like pillar for him was everybody had to eat at the table. He was like, no, we got to eat dinner together. And I had such crazy work schedules back then. But that really was the um the thing he wanted to do he wanted to eat at the table and i remember sitting at the table asking him why was that so important and he said that's the most valuable time that a family has is that when we sit at the table we can communicate and we can connect and figure out what's going on with our you know, he would always say that our my children were his children because we don't have children together. But that was valuable for me. Um, the fact that he wanted to help pay bills. I was like, oh, God, he wants to pay bills. Um, that he was very, that I wasn't structured. I was, you know, I'm all over the place. I have so much that I have to do. I took on a lot of responsibility being a mother of a big family, being a single mother of a big family. And he came in ready to work. And so that's why that question comes up. Is he my Mr. Wrong? Because he had issues. And I won't voice his issues, but he had issues. And then he went back to he went back to jail um, and had a 12-year bid. And while he was there, I was saying, okay, that's not working. I don't qualify for him. Um, he's incarcerated. But 
Now I need to focus and change my focus and stop looking at guys that are bad boys, but look at men that are of caliber and, and have a good job, so they say, and all of these things. And I realize that every man has some shit going on, <laughs> whether he wear a business suit or he wear Timberlands, they all got an issue, right? And then I was looking, I wasn't looking, looking like going out, going on dates with different guys, but I was seeking Okay, what are, what is the qualifications to make me eligible, right? I don't dress like everybody else. I don't always do my hair. I don't wear nails. I don't wear makeup but lipstick. I felt like, okay, Tamara, you just don't qualify. You don't fit into the, the what is the typical normal black woman. You don't dress like the normal black woman. You don't even, <laughs> honey, you don't even hang out. So how do you, how do you qualify? How do you qualify for the men? And, and okay, so, and, and I'm going to tell you, it devastated me when a friend said, well, you know, Tamara, you know, mentally you're not together. And I would see my other friends who are not mentally together, who are married, who have husbands, <laughs> boyfriends. And I'm like, so is it that I'm ineligible? Do I not, do I not qualify? What do I have to do? Do I need to bend over backwards? Or do I need to be submissive? Do I need to be all of these things that make me qualify for Mr. Right? Right? Because I got this one friend and a few friends saying, well, Tamara, you don't dress like us. Get your hair done every day. Get your nails done. Fix shit. You know, you know, get these kids out your house and then a man will come. Or my favorite line, be patient. God's going to deliver him. And I'm like, I am patient. I ain't had sex in 11 years. I ain't been with nobody, you know, except for Lloyd. And he incarcerated. Who am I qualified for? And and, and I guess that's the question that I want to ask a lot of people. Do you feel that way sometimes? Do you feel like I'm not qualified for him? You know, I'm waiting. I'm being patient. I'm being ultimately fair with myself. But they keep telling me, the world keeps telling me, because I'm not loud. And then I had the other friends who are loud and ratchet. And, you know, and not, nothing wrong with people being loud and ratchet. But they had men. So what what's wrong with me? Right? What's wrong with me? Should I qualify? Do I qualify for Mr. Wrong? You know what I'm saying? Do I qualify for Mr. Wrong? And is is he the only person that I'm supposed to be with? Because it, it would it would just hit me. I would be like, okay, I'm doing all the things I'm supposed to do. I'm 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 not out here in the streets, but why can't I get my Mr. Right? And then it went back to every time that so my mother asked me the other day, why you, <laughs> why you keep gravitating towards guys with a dead number? <laughs> so a dead number, everybody, is the identification number for a man who is incarcerated. She said, can you get a man that has, uh, you know, you know, uh, I said, they not attract, and I didn't, I don't know who's attracted to me. Um, but I do know, um, that, you can be all of those things. So you can change your hair. You can change your nails. You can get your get a makeover. You can be pretty every day. But if you... Not... Well, let me just say it for me. I can't speak for everybody else. Sometimes you may not attract your Mr. Right. Because maybe your mindset isn't right. But then I, I was confused. Because <laughs> I promise you, some of my friends don't have the right mindset. You know what I'm saying? And they got a man. And they in a long-term relationship. I'm talking real long-term. And he's good to her. So what makes me ineligible? What makes you ineligible? And sometimes I do believe that you have to be patient, but your patience wears thin. So let's be real. Sometimes our patience can't hold on. So I, I, I'm either stuck between settling, and that is an issue for women of color, that we're told to wait on God. We're told to go to church and find a man. Or we just keep running into these knuckleheads, right? And I can't deal with knuckleheads because 
<laughs> I just don't have the patience for it, right? Or then you, so then you start checking yourself and you start saying, there's got to be something wrong with me because I keep running into boo-boo. I keep running into crazies. Is it is it stamped on my forehead? I only attract crazy, the thugs, but I already told you what I like. And it goes back to that. You have to know what you like. So I realized that, for one, I had some unclosed chapters, right? As a writer, you can't finish off a book if your chapters are unfinished. You can't even go on to the next chapter until you finish that first chapter of a book that you are writing. And there was a chapter that was unfinished, and that chapter was called Lloyd. It it was the chapter of my life where we really got into a relationship. We had really great energy. We connected, but there was issues. He had some things that he needed to work on, and I definitely needed some things to work on myself. And the chapter was is that there's still a lot of for me, and I want to believe, and, I, and I'm going to say him too because he he will find me and under from if I'm in Africa, he will find me. Um, that we still had an unfinished chapter. It was it was a story that is unfinished because I think that we don't know if if well I don't know I can't speak for Lloyd but I can speak for Tamara that. I still very much love him. And so maybe that's the barrier of why I can't get Mr. Eligible because what seems to my family and to my, especially <laughs> my mother, is just that he's Mr. Wrong in a way of he's, he's incarcerated. And my family, especially my mother, you know, said, I just want you to be happy and I want you to connect with somebody who loves you. And I said, well, I'm out here. I'm not advertising, but I'm looking. And I have not, no one wants me but him. And so, and I'm not ashamed to say that, but in another sense, I want him to. Because we have great conversation. We get along so well. We understand each other in a way that people would never understand and it's okay to say that and it's okay to admit that and I'm just in fear and I said that to my mother of meeting someone who does not understand me because I'm weird like I like to work I like to write um my idea of a good time is doing what I love right because I would rather sit in a cafe and have fun or go to a park or chill because I'm still learning how to adapt to people if people don't get that because I'm not an outgoing person and I'm not what everybody else is and I'm okay with that. See, a lot of times when you're trying to attract what you want and attract what you seek, you have to deal with your mess. That's what the whole purpose of Blog Diaries is. And dealing and dealing with Mr. Ineligible, I needed to take care of me. Because I said that to Lloyd the other day when we had a conversation. I said, you know, I think that all these years of being separated taught me to take care of Tamara. And I'm still in the process of taking care of Tamara and learning how to take care of Tamara and accepting that I don't want to wear nails. Like, I hate that. I type. I don't want to wear long nails. I like wearing lipstick. I like getting my hair done. But I want to rest, right? I want to I wanna still be me. And I think sometimes we try to appease other people and we lose ourselves. See, I think that we become unqualified. We unqualify ourselves to ourselves. So let me say that again. Sometimes we unqualify ourselves to ourselves. We can't get into good relationships or have a happy relationship because we have not qualified ourselves the way that we should. We have not said that this is me, that I am worthy of love. I am worthy of being liked. I am worthy of being cared for and being with the person who I just simply gel with. And I'm sorry if it's not Mr. Right. You're Mr. Right. I had to come to that conclusion. And I'm not saying that we are going to be forever in a day. But there's a chapter that has to be closed. 
and I don't know what the end result is. Like I that I fear the end result. But what I do know is that I have to qualify myself. See, even if he's not Mr. Right, I might be disqualifying myself to be in any running because I feel like I'm not all of the things that I mentioned in the beginning. A lot of people are in marriages and relationships and they're still disqualifying themselves. Right? They're still saying I'm not good enough for my husband. I'm not even good enough for myself. I'm not pretty enough. I I, I gotta lose 20 pounds. I gotta get my hair done. He don't but you're not qualifying yourself, so how do we expect Mr. Wright to even be in the running? How can how can we expect for someone to say, yes, she is the one, she is absolutely the one, when we keep telling ourselves that we're not? That was the barrier. It wasn't about the guys. It wasn't about the men. It wasn't about... Um, anyone else it was about me I disqualified myself I sat down and I said that I was not I was ineligible I said I was ineligible for love I was ineligible to be happy I was ineligible for Mr. Right because and even down to Lloyd and not to say that Lloyd is a bad because Lloyd is, is very intelligent he is one of the um greatest people that I've ever met who just really gets me that really is what it is. I don't want to be with somebody who doesn't get me, right? And believe me, it takes a lot of work to get me. Um, that's why it's it's important that we understand that. We have to understand that we can't continue to expect people to qualify us, right? I, I think that the society has created an, an environment where you have to meet these standards and these qualifications to be loved. Period. Let her be loved because she got pretty eyes, pretty hair, nice body, thick lips, and nice hips, but she can't read. Right? She doesn't even like herself. She doesn't even love herself. She doesn't even know how to be a good friend because she thinks that I need to be simply by myself. And I need, but the reality is, when you disqualify yourself, when you put yourself down, when you neglect yourself, when you don't treat yourself to the the level that you deserve, sometimes you're not going to get, you're going to not be ready for a relationship, period. Like, you have to get it together for yourself and stop thinking, why come? Because that's where I was at. Like, why come? She got a man, but she don't, she don't, she don't have none of herself together. And it was my brother who said, well, who says that she's happy in that relationship? Who says that she's so content and in love? A lot of people stay together for convenience and financial reasons. A lot of people stay together and don't even like each other. A lot of people don't even know how to have a good time with their mate. And I, and I think that in all the times that I thought I was ineligible, I was researching in my life what I wanted. I want to enjoy someone. Like, I don't want to be in a relationship where, even with my past relationship, um, there would be a period where we truly did not like each other and we knew it. I didn't like him, he didn't like me, and it was just, it was awful. It was awful. We It it, it reflected on my kids because as I look at my girls now in relationships, I see the choices they make. They think that it's okay, and it's not. Because if you can't enjoy one another's company, then why are you in a relationship? Like, I don't want to be in a, and I know that we're going to have issues and and disagreements, but... At the ultimate end of the day, this person that you choose to love that's going to be your husband or your boyfriend has to, you have to like each other. Like, period. I just believe that. Like, you have to like each other. You have to. I don't want to be in a marriage of convenience. 
I don't want to be in a relationship of convenience because a lot of people are around people because it's convenient. They're unhappy in their love life. They're unhappy in their place of love because they think this is this is all I deserve. This is all I deserve. And I think that that's what disqualifies us to find our Mr. Right. And so it goes back to being with Mr. Wrong, right? I love Lloyd because I know his I know his faults. I know his faults, but I also know his greatness. And I think that when you can see the greatness in a person's outside of their faults, like he is my biggest supporter. I don't care where I'm at, I don't care how mad he may be. He supports me as far as my career, as far as he is the person who told me you, the world needs to hear your voice. He is the very first person that said that to me. In all the years that I was doing my career and wanting to be a writer and wanting to be an author, he said, your letters is this, you know, and, and we started where, you know, we met. Then he went away, he went away and, and he said, you, you got to write. Write the book. It's okay. And he's the one that really pushed me to write and he and I don't care where I'm at Tamara did you write a new book yet what are you doing in your career he always cheers me on and it's not because he's incarcerated not because he get packages because I don't I am not I am awful okay <laughs> he'll tell you um because he knows I have a big financial responsibility with my family he knows where I stand he just kind of knows um but as far as cheering me on and keeping me going. And I need, there's times that I just really need his encouragement. It's times that I will just, I will talk to him for months and he will find a way to call me and I will put money on the phone because I need that positive voice in my ear. I need that person to tell me to marry, keep fighting because there are times on a daily basis that I want to give up on my career because it gets so hard and gets so overwhelming and he will push me to say you can't give up on this it's what you ask for and that's when Mr. Wrong can sometimes seem like he's wrong but be your Mr. Right see I think that your right does not have to be everybody's right so I'm going to say that again your right may not be everybody's right what you understand and relate to may not be for everybody else. No one has permission to tell you who's right for you. I learned, even because of my daughters, that I cannot qualify somebody to be who I, I may be right at the end of the day. They need to learn for themselves what love is. I always told my girl that my girls that I cannot choose who they love. No one on this earth can choose who you love but God. Everybody is connected to you for a certain reason, a season, and a lesson. I used to think that Lloyd was connected to me for a season. Because I was like, I just got to get Mr. Right. Something's got to go right. But maybe... In all the things that I've been looking for, it is basically in him. And I'm not telling y'all that he's perfect. I, I will not <laughs> lie. But what I what I do know is that he connects to me in ways that no one else has. That he really gets me. Like, I, I, I literally, there's a, he has literally finished a lot of my sentences. I've finished a lot of his sentences. And he's taught me more than... And people really know a lot of things that I learned about businesses. Um, he would warn me about and he would say, you know, you can't be friends with your people that you're working with. Keep that on a client. Um, keep your business on a client person relationship, client business relationship. And I would kind of just like, well, they're my friend. He said, but friends, when it comes to business, it can get tricky and it can get ugly. And he would he I kid you not. Never, it's never failed. He's always been 100% right. He'd be like, you know what? That situation doesn't sound comfortable. You need to know that. And, and I would just not 
well, you incar- you know, I'm, I'm, be from, I'm not going to pry. I'd be like, but you incarcerated. He'd be like, yeah, but I know what I'm talking about. And he would be right. So, guys, I, you know, I just wanted to kind of talk about that today because it's important. Um, it's important to, like, really encourage yourself to know that you're, you're not ineligible. I think we disqualify ourselves. Most men don't disqualify. And don't get me wrong. Men do disqualify us. But we disqualify ourselves more than we'll ever know. We we put each other down. We put ourselves down. We, we, um, We let ourselves feel as if we're not worthy of love. And that's not the case at all. You are more than worthy to be loved. You are more than worthy to be liked. You are more than worthy to have someone because God never brought us in this world. And I use God because I told y'all, I think if y'all know me, I said that me and God wasn't cool like that, but we're getting cool again because of me, not him. Because even in that relationship, I disqualified myself as being unworthy of his love, unworthy of being in that type of relationship. See, we, again, we disqualify ourselves and say I'm ineligible for these positions, uh, whether it be in a relationship, whether it be in a friendship, and most of all, and, and also a relationship with God, we, we come into this habit of disqualifying ourselves over and over and over again because we think we're not good enough or we are afraid to fix the things that need to be fixed. We're afraid to heal the wounds that are hurting us because I'm going to hold on to that grudge. I'm going to hold on to that anger. I'm going to hang on to that bitterness. Because if I hang on to that bitterness, if I hang on to that anger, if I hang on to all those things, then I'm going to get what I want. And it don't work that way, right, at all. So today, I just want people to really stop disqualifying themselves because they think they are unworthy. You're Mr. Eligible can't come because you 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 disqualified yourself, and I'm speaking from experience that not everybody's lucky or blessed enough to get a Lloyd who loves you regardless, and that's another thing he loves me regardless of whatever. Um, I could be gone for months, and believe me, I have. I'm a I'm a person who will cut people. Believe that they cut me off, and I'm quick to cut you off. I'm quick to leave you alone. I'm not asking you why. I'm just not. Like, I'm not going to ask you why. I, I do it all the time. I, I'm so good at it that it's actually become what I'm, I have a PhD in. I'm not begging for friendships. I'm not begging for love. And, and I'm not doing none of that. I refuse to. But I've done it to him. And he has come back on regular... <laughs> Tamara, I just don't, I have this fear. I'm right. And literally, I'll get a letter like, I've been worried about you. Or he'll call. And I'll be like, why do you keep calling me, dude? I just, but I, and I always answer. So that means I love him. Because if I disqualify you out of that relationship, I'm done with you. No. That's on the floor. I'm on the live. Um, that if I disqualify you when I'm, I'm on this. That if I'm I'm done with you, I'm done with you. Period. Like, literally. Like, I'm more likely to cut you off than you are to cut me off. And even if you cut me off, I will not ask why. I refuse to. Because, like I said yesterday in a, in a podcast, I, no, it was a Facebook Live, that every time you lose someone, God will replace them. So once I realized that, I was like, huh. <laughs> Oh, okay, it works like that. And I could love you to death. I could like you as a friend. I could love you. At, but now I've, I've come to that realization, and I'm going to tell you why real quick. Is because when I was with um, my children's father, I fought so hard for him. And to the point where we fought each other. And it really was a done deal. And I learned something. Stop fighting for something that's a done deal. If something is a done deal, it is over and, and, and let it go. So, guys, I want to thank you so much for listening. My name is Tamara Brown. I am an author, blogger, website designer, as well as a publishing consultant and the host 
of Blah Diaries, Broke, Lonely, Angry, and Horny. You can find me on Twitter at Tam Loves to Write. You can find me on Instagram, Tam Loves to Write 39, and Facebook, Tam Loves to Write. Guys, I want you to stay connected. Um, my books are out on Amazon, Cash Your Money, Love Has No Way, Size, Fat Girl Vigilante, Blue's Treasure, um, Gatekeepers of Secrets, Love, Lust, and Lotto. Yes, ladies, I love what I do. Ladies and gents, I love what I do. So, guys, thank you for listening today. Thank you for giving me your time and lending me your ear. Have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Bye-bye.